The 90s were a rather strange era for TV and movies, and sometimes the concept for animated series that makes you ask, why is this even a thing? And well, that's why I've decided to watch those odd and bizarre 90s animated series. I'm Professor Retro, and this is Bizarre Cartoons. Now, back in 1979, a bizarre B-movie hit. Theaters about an evil scientist who tried to take over the world by turning tomatoes into ravenous monsters. Yes, I'm talking about Tack of the Killer Tomatoes. However, it wasn't until 1990 when an even stranger thing happened. Imagine with me, for one second, it is Saturday morning. You just poured yourself a bowl of your favorite cereal. You turn on the TV open to see what Fox Kids has to offer. So after our commercials for the newest Sega Genesis game, you hear these words on Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. And you scratch your head wondering what the hell you're about to watch. <laughs> now Fox Kids has given us some awesome cartoons in the 90s. Animaniacs, Batman the Animated Series, and so on. However, some bizarre ones somehow made it on the air, and today's selection is one of them. Let's talk about Attack of the Killer Tomatoes, the animated series. So as I said in the intro, this show is based off of a 1979 movie of the same name, but the original movie and its sequel were actually a spoof of the giant monster movies of the 1950s, just as the movie Airplane is a spoof of disaster movies. However, it would have stayed there if it weren't for a little-known cartoon known as the Muppet Babies, where in one episode titled The Wacko Zone, Baby Fozzie recalled how he faced Attack of the Silly Tomatoes. During that segment, clips from the original movie were shown, and in the end, he used a ketchup bottle to capture the giant tomato that was lunging at him. That episode alone was one of the highest rated episodes of the show, which caused New World Pictures to approach Foursquare Productions, the people who made the original movie, to make a sequel to the first movie, and offered them a massive $2 million budget, and thus the sequel, Return of the Killer Tomatoes, was born. New World Pictures was pleased with the result, and wanted to try to replicate them with an animated series aimed at the younger audience, and thus, in the fall of 1990, Fox Kids premiered Attack of the Killer Tomatoes, the series. The show takes place five years after the Great Tomato War, when all tomatoes are outlawed. However, that hasn't stopped Dr. Puget T. Gangrene. Really, the name of the antagonist of the show is something that happens if you leave a wound to get infected. After creating more sentient tomatoes, he decided to create a new creation, Terra Boomde, a tomato turned human, who together with her furry brother, F.T., or Furry Tomato, who she passes off as a dog, they both head into the city. Enter the protagonist of the show, Chad Finletter, the nephew of Wilbur Finletter, the hero of the first movie, who gets her a job at his uncle's tomato pizza parlor, and she shares the secret that both her and F.T. are really a tomato and they vowed to stop Dr. Futures from taking over the world with sentient tomatoes. Never thought I'd say sentient tomato twice in one sentence. So this show is as bizarre as it gets. The cartoon beat Devil spoof and a sequel. Let's begin with the title sequence. We are greeted with the theme song that repeats the title of the show until it gets us a new line, followed by a repeat of the main chorus. So the first episode starts out with you seeing the poor citizens of Stands with Keeney, a that name for a town followed by the army who is trying to end the attack, but fail an attempt. And then we are taken to a news broadcast of the events, where you see the first of the bad jokes. After the video of the attack, the screen above the newscaster says, The space for rent. This is not even funny. I mean, at the time it might have been, but looking back, it is a poor joke, all ending with him saying the tomato war is over and then being attacked himself by a tomato. We are taken... To Wilbur Finletter's tomato parlor pizza, where two people are laughing at the news, and Wilbur says they wouldn't laugh if they saw what he was through during the Great Tomato War. So we are subject to the first of the tearing lines. These were used in every movie about a war from the past. Chad walks in holding a pepper shaker and FT, who are both looking for Tara. So an FT spots her, but she is somehow in tomato form. I guess pepper is what can change her from tomato form into human form where Chad tells her that she can't let on that both her and FT are really tomatoes. What, they couldn't think of any other way to transform her into human form? There has to be other ways to do that because make her sneeze with pepper. After she tells them that both her and FT are fatal experiments of the green, future T gang green, we're then taken to the lab of the evil doctor himself with assistant Gregor Smith. Really, they gave him the last name of Smith. There are other names they could have used for his last name. Or were they avoiding the disaster that was annoyed streaming? 
To simply explain this, Domino's back in the 80s had a strange character called the Noid, and someone with the last name of Noid shot up at Domino's location claiming that the Noid was making fun of him. After Igor, who acts like he is a reporter for the news, is called by a slacker by Dr. Gangrene himself, and Igor attempts to walk towards Gangrene. He then trips in the mic cord, which causes Bakulev, you guess it, to manage to fall on him, and then Gangrene enters the scene. Who sounds a lot like an evil version of Gomez Adams from the Adams family, who is holding a tuning fork and walks through the lab, followed by Aunt Taraja Sentinome, as it says, They said it couldn't be done, and then says, You said it couldn't be done, and tells us that he was actually created electronic controlled vegetables. After speaking out the right frequency, his machine creates a tomato whistle that will play it will cause any tomato to attack. However, he blows it and is soon confronted by Senti Domino's coming after him. And like an evil doctor, he then heads into the closet. I guess you can see he has gone back into the closet? Ouch. That was the worst joke of the ones in the show. He claims he had a plan, where he is questioned by a tomato who could talk. So now some of them can talk. What is next? Talking carrots? We try to stop him from being put into a salad? We are taking him back to Wilbur's Pizza Parlor, where Terry and Chad are waiting for the next pizza creation from Chad's Uncle Wilbur, which turns out to be male and ranch salmon. Jesus, that feels worse than the bizarre pizzas that Teenage Mutant Ninja Girls came up with. He then tries to feed a piece to FT, who eats it and runs to what I assume was a way to get rid of the taste. And then when others try it, they have the same reaction, and Wilbur proceeds to tell them that pizza was not around during the Great Tomato War, and due to that, people starved. Two guys want to watch a game on TV, and he then proceeds to repeat the whole line about kids that didn't know what he went through during the war, and the rest of the people that place the usual, yeah, 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 chant. Tara soon hands a peanut butter and onion pizza, that sounds just as gross as the male or ranch pizza from before, to Chad, where he has to deliver it to Whitley White at the TV station. As he delivers the pizza, he is stopped by what looks like the garbage truck to room by Igor Smith, but when he smiles, his teeth sparkle. Then we see a small army of tomatoes, who are led by a tomato with a mustache and is wearing a general's hat, and who somehow has a Russian accent, who tells them that they should stop complaining, and if it weren't for him, they would have starved. Really, what does sent you tomatoes eat? The rest of the vegetables? Or do they eat themselves? And that is why they are only a few left. After they spotted Chad, they proceed to attack him as still a skateboard. The general then calls the rest, naming them as a red guard, really a red guard, whether it's something else like ketchup brigade or the juices or something else. And then they take off the chest skateboard. After he was shed, and says, tomatoes and sand zucchini, and then he has to warn his uncle, but after he delivers the disgusting pizza. We are then taken to the outside of the TV station, whose call letters spell K-R-U-D, or crud. Maybe this is foreshadowing of how the rest of this episode is going to be where we hear the voice of Whitley saying that he will continue after his pizza. He then opens the door thinking it was Chad delivering the pizza only to be greeted by the journalist in Red Guard. And then he says, wait, you are not my pizza delivery boy? Then he says the line dramatic pause for some reason. You are tomatoes. If you remember the episode of Garfield and Friends, there's an episode where Garfield is channel surfing, and every channel is playing a bad sci-fi movie, and the same thing happens as well. He then offers them an exclusive interview. Come on, you think tempting sending to me a little interview is going to save your life? Which isn't impressing them at all. Soon they proceed to attack him, and even in the event of the attack, he reports, saying that he is at the scene of his own kidnapping. Really? To which, after watching one of their own and then flying into the trash can, the tomatoes retreat. Really, you are sent to tomatoes, and when one of you is trashed, you retreat. Whitley then claims that no one gets the best of him, only to be tied up by Igor as he yells out the thing you need to think when solving a problem. You know, who, what, and why. Igor then apologizes to Whitley, saying that it was Whitley's career or his, and then orders the small army of some tomatoes to take Whitley back to the hideout and make sure Whitley is comfortable. That's an interesting way to take over the news. With Igor then going in to report well, claiming that he will report more after these messages from the sponsors. Now, if you're watching those at the time it was broadcast, acts of commercials would be shown, and then you'd be taken back to the episode. So far, we are now about eight and a half minutes into what is a 22 minute episode, and so far the jokes are bad, but what do you expect? It's a spoof of a spoof.
Chad now rises the fish in the foot, saying that he can't believe that a skateboard was taken by tomatoes. Chad sees that poor Whitley is tied up and is being kidnapped by tomatoes. Chad comes up from the sewer. We never see him even enter it at all, but magically comes up from there. When does he magic that he can teleport him into the sewers and have the strength to lift a heavy manhole cover? We then see Ego reporting the news, claiming that nothing happened at all. And Terry claims that he is not the normal newscaster. Wilbur says, yeah, it's some new guy. With FT acting like he is questioning it. And then Terry, whose head is upside down, tells FT that it's Igor. Wow, as if he didn't know that. And then says that something is wrong at the station. And somehow I have a feeling that Chad is in trouble. What does she have to a sense? And that she has to go back to him as her apron falls on FT and he makes it sound like a sick caramel. We are then taken back to the lab of Gangrene, where we see Igor on the TV predicting the weather with even more bad jokes. He says it will be sunny until nightfall, and then there will be increasing darkness. Really? And then Gangrene appears saying that the master plan has come to a solution of what we have never told about, and says soon he will rule the world, and that he and his army sent to tomatoes will triumph. And then we are taken to a basement where they are keeping Whitley White, and the general makes one of the first jokes made to make fun of the show except claiming that with big budget special effects. Woodley says another classic overused line in most scenes where someone is kidnapped by a villain, and the General Tomato says he already has and his trusty fans will keep him there only to find them playing cards, and he doesn't them were playing cards instead of watching the prisoner. Wait a minute, before he had a Russian accent, now he's like a New Yorker. Continuity or lack thereof, I guess, and somehow the one that's facing the window doesn't even see that Chad is looking at them at all. And he then asks how they are holding the cards so that they have no hands. And they throw the cards down and walk away. Chad, after realizing that Will is captured, says that if he can sneak off and find some help, he is then greeted by a massive army of more sentient tomatoes where he tries to reason with them only to be attacked by tomatoes. And as soon as Becca begins to will as he then attempts to attack them, as soon as he rolls out of the line of fire, grabs the garbage can and why do protagonists who are attacked outside unarmed think a trash can lid will make a shield? As soon as the tomatoes start to attack him relentlessly, only to retreat as a massively large tomato appears. Chad sees it and tries yet another failed movie defense, the old throw a trash can at an overpowered enemy, to which it eats it like a small sack, and then it explodes and Terry appears asking if he is alright, only to be foiled when he sees a hand pour salt. Under which by now if you dab it known already that Pepper turns her into human, that soul turns her into tomato. And we see Gangrene grab her and ask Chad if he was looking for her, and then ask if she was a friend. Gangrene then tells Chad that Tara was his own creation and that she betrayed him, and that he will have the last laugh, and that he will see what happens to those who try to stop him. Gee, we've heard that in every movie where a villain captures a hero. Gangrene then tells us how his Grandmaster plan, which is to use the whistle he created to broadcast over the airwaves using the station to send it all over us, throwing all tomatoes into a frenzy. And then we see the angry tomatoes start to attack the citizens of the town, and that he will be master of the town, or what will be left of it, and then says another tired line of dialogue, Today sends the Kini, tomorrow the world. And then asks Chad what he thinks, thinks of it, to which Chad replies that he thinks Gangrene is mad. Well, that is obvious, isn't it? To which Gangrene denies that he is mad, just angry. As we hear him say that, we see Chad make fun of Gangrene by making some funny faces. By now, oh, we are about 13 minutes into this episode, and we have been subject to even more bad dialogue and even more or less worse jokes. But let's move on. Gangrene then tells Chad he is going to show us just how angry he is. We then see a helicopter in the shape of a tomato being flown by Dane Green, where he says he loves the smell of lasagna in the morning. What the hell kind of line is that? Does he think he's Garfield? We then see Whitley and Chad now tied up in the basement, where the general tomato says that the horse is on the other foot. What? That line doesn't make any sense at all. That's like saying the egg laid the chicken. Soon we hear the back of FT and the general says that no one will get past him and his army of tomatoes who just run out the window and he calls them muck cowards and says he will spit on their antipasto. What, he changed the classic Monty Python line I spit in your general direction? 
So we see Wilburn has old tomato war get a parachute and all, holding a sword and FT World War says get another tire line. Hold it right there. But then adds the words catch up breath. As he runs down the stairs, the general tomato then yells at his gang to wait for him. As Wilbur rescues Chad, he then realizes that the other person tied up is Whitley White, the newscaster. Who does Wilbur, he is right, and says he will not give autographs at the moment and tells Wilbur that he needs to take him to the station if Igor takes his job for him. And then says that the meals are coming, and with Wilbur and Whitley worship the church, but shut the door and poor Chad as he realizes he is still stuck. But F.T., who is still there, finds Tara in a tomato form for some reason. Chad has the cloth and pepper to change her back to human. Gee, no one thought to even search Chad for anything that he can use to escape. But I guess even gangrene is not that intelligent. Tara changes any human form and looks for and asks where she is. And Chad replaces that she looks explain later. Yet another overused line. We then see Wilbur and Whitley in Wilbur's pizza delivery truck heading to the station. Well, we're at least say they got to hurry and there's trouble and Wilbur asks what is it to which Wilbur then does what someone says in the airplane line it's a big room where television is made but that's been pork now okay now I see why all the repeated dialogue they arrive at the station only to find the doors are locked and then someone with a beard and wearing a hat tells them to go away they're closed gee borrowed from was it a lot much will they pull the care mold by saying he must let it let him in and who he is to which the man says that whitley is on vacation if he is whitley why is he not inside whitley prize because he is not being let in we then see Terry and chad arrive at the back of the station trying to figure out how to get to gangrene to make a whistle chad then tells ft to do his stuff and he pulls a superman move and super jumps to the top of the building and enters through the chimney and opens the door where Terry asks where the station is to which chad tells her to follow him you see Igor and Gangrene talk as Igor calls Gangrene Mad Doctor Ship and Gangrene tells Igor not to call him that. Igor then starts to try his best old school Igor impression which looks like it's bitten by a walker from The Walking Dead. In rushes Tara and Chad to look through the door. Tara sees the whistle and says there it is and Chad asks where and Tara says over there and we get a close up of it. Chad and Tara appear and they try to figure out where everyone is where FT runs in with the whistle and tells them to run as they run to the props are followed by Gangrene and Igor. Igor turns on the lights and Gangrene walks around looking for them. As he passes FT shaking he looks like a bunch of tomato leaves and as he passes FT we see Chad appear from a coat hanging. Chad hiding in his shell finds a conveniently placed box of whistle. Gee that's convenient. Soon Gangrene spots Chad and tells Igor to grab him and tells them to hand over the whistle, and Chad replies he doesn't even have it. Igor then proceeds to turn Chad upside down and shake him, hoping the whistle will fall out. In rushes Tara and FT, where Tara jumps in the back of Igor to try to stop them, as FT rushes in and bites Igor like a rabid tomato dog. Igor spins Chad, and the whistle falls out, but is it the actual whistle, or is it one of the whistles in the box? To which Igor and Gangri leave the room, Tara says yet another piece of tired lines, you'll never get away with this. Igor and Gangrene jump into chairs at the station. Igor spins it around and Gangrene stops it. And as Igor, who is not facing the camera, starts to go back into the photo mode, we see the two cameramen look a bit confused. Gangrene spins Igor to be facing the camera as Igor introduces him. And then he says that Gangrene is a scientist that is not mad but angry. We get it, they're angry. And that he is going to rule with the whistle. As he blows the whistle, it makes a duck sound, and a large flock of ducks flies in, and Gangrene realizes that he's been fooled, and to head to the tomato counter. As they slide off the counter, play the song, and gets the sentient tomatoes to follow them, and Gangrene tells Igor to stop it, and Igor asks why. Wilbur and Whitley show up, but open their only to find Terror and Chad dancing to the music, still coming from the tomato counter, to which Wilbur then says the tired old saying, Kids. After more real commercials, we see Igor and Gangrene back at the lab where once again Igor is in reporter mode, who claims that Gangrene is on the cutting edge of his field and then asks what inspired him in experimentation, to which Gangrene replies that he swallowed a lungmore and he pulls his tie and writes up. Igor then throws it back to some imaginary studio, and we are then see the title card of the show followed by the closing credits. Now on to the review. So first of all, Something based off a of spoof, 
It does a decent job of poking fun at other spills like Airplane and the original movie, but the show could use a better lines than those that have been used before. One thing that got me was the transitions between scenes. They all were tomato based. One was a tomato looking the screen, the other was it someone cleaning the tomato off the screen. The character lineup was okay. I know the show takes place years after the first movie, but if Wilbur run a pizza place that serves pizza strain stranger and grosser than the ones mentioned in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle cartoons, it's just a bad copy. It takes most of the episode to set everything up. The real action doesn't start till the show is almost over. Overall, Attack of the Killer Tomatoes a series is a bizarre but decent show to watch if you like spoofs. But to really understand it, you first should watch the original movie, and if you are an NES fan, you can play the game based off the show, which came out years after the TV show was even done. So, that is the end of this episode of Bizarre Cartoons. Next time we will look at a Freakazoid, an even more bizarre cartoon. Until then, be sure to grab your parachute and sword and fend off any scented tomatoes. Remember to hit that like button, ring that bell, and smash that subscribe button. So you get the heads up for the next episode of Bizarre Cartoons. I'm Professor Retro saying peace out and stay tomato free.